Concealment If the hex digits are always bits 1 to 4 and bits 5 to 8 of each byte of the block and key, then Emily still stands a chance of discovering the linearity. To really make Emily's task seriously hard, you can conceal the bits within each byte. Instead of using bits 1, 2, 3, 4 of the plain text and bits 1, 2, 3, 4 of the key, and putting the resulting sum in bits 1, 2, 3, 4 of the cipher text, you could take the hex digits from bits 2, 7, 4, 1 of the plain text in that order and bits 4, 8, 3, 5 of the key and put the resulting sum into bits 8, 6, 1, 7 of the cipher text byte. You can use any combination of four bits that you choose in any order, as long as the two hex digits in each byte use all eight bits once each. Just to be clear, we are not saying that Sandra extracts these bits from each byte, deciphers the disguised linear substitution, performs the arithmetic, then repacks the resulting bits in a different order. That would be far too slow, and Emily would know exactly what was afoot. Instead, Sandra does this when she builds the substitution tableau. To encipher, she simply uses the key byte to select a row in the tableau and then performs the substitution on the plain text byte. All of the disguise and concealment are built into the substitution tableau. Camouflage The cipher, as described so far, is merely a very complicated polyalphabetic cipher. Emily could solve messages using the techniques of section 5.8.3. To make a backdoor serial cipher look like a strong block cipher, you need some camouflage to hide the polyalphabetic cipher that is at its core. One method is to use a bit transposition that is applied to the block after each round. This will make the cipher look like a substitution permutation network, section 11.1. To preserve the hidden linearity, the four bits that make up each hex digit must end up in a single byte. They need not be in the same bit positions in that byte, and they need not be contiguous, but they must be in one byte together. In other words, each byte of the input gets split into two hex digits that are fed into two other bytes at the next round in some transposed order. Unfortunately, if Emily has access to the published specifications for the backdoor serial cipher, she might well discover this type of camouflage. Let's look at a second form of camouflage that is much harder for Emily to uncover. This method borrows an idea from the Data Encryption Standard, DES, section 11.2. Each cipher block is divided into two halves. In each round, First, the left half is used as the keys to encipher the right half. Then the right half is used as the keys to encipher the left half. We have already seen how the linearity can be disguised and concealed within the substitution tableau, so let's take advantage of that to create the illusion of a strong block cipher. Each round of the cipher will consist of four steps. One, each byte in the left half is enciphered using one byte of the key. 2. Each byte of the right half is enciphered using one byte of the left half as the key. 3. Each byte in the right half is enciphered using one byte of the key. 4. Each byte of the left half is enciphered using one byte of the right half as the key. To make this look ultra strong, each byte of the block should be enciphered using a different byte of the key in each round, and each byte of one half of the block should be enciphered using a different byte from the opposite half in each round. You can fancy this up by shuffling the bytes in the block and the bytes in the key for every round. You can make the key larger than the block to present an even greater impression of strength. The cipher remains linear, however, because the linearity has been preserved in every step of every round. Storage Let's look at the mechanics of the backdoor serial cipher. In each byte of the key, the plain text and the cipher text, there are two hex digits. Each of these could occupy any four bits of the byte in any order. Let's call that ordered set of four bits the bit configuration 
of the hex digit, and the combination of two hex digits in a byte, the byte configuration. The key does not normally change configuration, but the byte configuration of the plain text and ciphertext can change at any stage of the encipherment. For each substitution there are six bit configurations, two for the key, two for the plain text, and two for the ciphertext. For each hex digit, the permutation, scrambled order, of the 16 hex values also can be different, so there are also six permutations of the hex values for each substitution, two for the key, two for the plain text, and two for the ciphertext. This combination of six configurations and six permutations determines the substitution tableau. For each distinct combination of bit configurations and permutations, a separate substitution tableau is needed. Each tableau uses 65,536 bytes, so storage might be a problem. If this is an issue, I suggest using at most two byte configurations, and for each bit configuration using at most two different permutations, perhaps alternating from one round to the next. To further reduce the amount of storage required, you could consider using the same permutation each time you use any given bit configuration.